click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have understood that how basically pressure and volume they can alter the uh, basically a reversible reaction to a irreversible reaction that is they could turn into a forward reaction or they could turn into a backward reaction depending on the reaction uh, so we have learned in our previous lecture. So now here we are going to talk about that is how basically temperature plays a very vital role in uh, basically uh, in a reaction which is exhibiting a chemical equilibrium so that is what we are going to talk about in this topic so now let us understand that thing. So whenever it comes to temperature, we know that a particular reaction the, that could exhibit uh, an endothermic reaction or it could give us a uh, that is a exothermic reaction. So depending on this reaction, whether whenever a reaction is exhibiting heat, obviously the temperature or obviously we could say the temperature can be increased or the temperature can be decreased. But in that condition, suppose if a reaction is exhibiting a chemical equilibrium and we do a sudden change uh, by giving it uh, a high temperature or by basically or uh, by giving it a low temperature so in that condition also we could basically alter the reaction in a forward reaction or in a backward reaction so that is what we are going to talk about over here and that is all based on basically Lee Chandler's principle and that is what I am going to mention over here so that is uh, the first example that I am going to talk about is a particular reaction suppose uh, Suppose if we consider a reaction and uh, that could be basically an endothermic reaction but uh, let me explain over here that is as we have uh, mentioned earlier also an endothermic is a, uh, endothermic reaction is uh, those reactions in which basically the amount of heat is been absorbed by the uh, reacting mixture and uh, that is what i am going to mention over here with a particular example that is basically whenever we involve nitrogen along with that of the oxygen so the product that or the possible product that we could get is basically nitric oxide and that is also that is two moles of nitric oxide we have mentioned over here but it has been found that uh, the uh, reaction that is what we could get is basically it has been found to be an endothermic reaction. So that is means that the heat has been absorbed by the reacting mixture. So therefore the amount of heat uh, that has been absorbed in this reaction has been found to be that is uh, 79.9 kilojoule of energy has been absorbed. So this is a reaction that I have mentioned over here which uh, indicates that uh, the product that we could get is basically 2 moles of NO that is nitric oxide along with that of 79.9 kilojoule of energy is being absorbed and that is the reason that it is known as endothermic reactions. So now let me come to the point that how basically the temperature can uh, change this uh, they change this situation or it could give us a forward reaction or it would give us a backward reaction because now as you could see that it is the one which is uh, exhibiting a chemical equilibrium so suppose what happens if we increase the temperature so it has been observed that as uh, uh, the reaction is itself an endothermic reaction so even though if we increase the temperature obviously that much amount of heat uh, is been absorbed by the reacting mixture and as you could see that uh, it is itself uh, an uh, endothermic reaction so this will absorb the amount of heat that will provide to this uh, uh, reaction at uh, equilibrium so in this case we see the, the amount of heat uh, that will be absorbed it will favor the reaction to move to a forward reaction and that is how basically we could get a forward reaction but what if we uh, decrease the temperature obviously we know that uh, at equilibrium obviously this is a reaction which absorbs the heat and suppose if we decrease the temperature obviously the uh, at equilibrium position we could observe uh, that is uh, and according to Lee Chandler's principle the equilibrium will shift from right uh, to left hand side or from the product to the uh, uh, reactant side and that is what uh, the reaction could be turned into a reversible reaction so therefore this kind of endothermic reactions are being favored so as to obtain a forward reaction what we have to do is we have to increase the temperature so whenever the temperature is increased then the reaction that we could obtain is basically a forward reaction so this is what i want to do or talk about the endothermic reactions and uh, that's it so this was one of the examples so as i have mentioned earlier also that is in such kind of endothermic reaction if we increase the temperature the reaction will be moved towards a forward direction and the product that we could obtain will be in a uh, maximum amount so let me talk about the another one that is what happens if we uh, alter the temperature uh, for an exothermic reaction 
So exothermic reactions are those reactions in which basically the particular amount of heat energy is being evolved uh, whenever the reaction has been completed or whenever the reaction has been occurred. So one of those examples is basically the formation of ammonia. Obviously we know that uh, for formation of ammonia we need N2 along with that of 3 moles of H2 so that we could get uh, that is uh, ammonia that is 2 moles of ammonia but again we know that it is a reversible process so therefore that is the reason that we have mentioned this uh, symbol over here. So let me uh, explain that uh, the amount of energy that has been uh, that is released during this uh, process it has been found to be that is 92.2 kilojoules. So this is a reaction that we have mentioned over here basically during the formation of that is ammonia that is two moles of ammonia uh, we could find that is 92.2 kilojoules of energy has been uh, evolved and that is the reason that it is known as an exothermic reaction. So in this condition basically uh, if we uh, provide temperature or suppose if we increase the temperature then what will happen obviously uh, the reaction is itself an exothermic reaction that is it is being producing heat and obviously the temperature is more and in that condition also suppose if we are increasing the temperature then obviously at equilibrium position we could see that as uh, since the temperature has been increased and uh, basically according to Lee Chatter's principle obviously the stress will uh, try to get reduced so in that case basically uh, to, uh, to relieve the stress obviously in this case we see the two moles of NH3 along with this mole uh, this much amount of energy and along with that we have increased the temperature so in that case basically the reaction will favor a backward reaction and we could obtain that is n2 and 3h2 back so in this case basically we can't obtain the product that is two moles of nh3 so so as to reverse this process also as to basically to obtain a maximum amount of product what we have to do is we have to that is we have to decrease the temperature and that is the reason that whenever we decrease the temperature and this much amount of energy that has been released obviously a kind of in according to Lee Charter's principle obviously a condition would be maintained in this case basically we could find that is two moles of NH3 are been obtained and that also in a maximum amount so therefore we could say ultimately that is if the temperature decreases then only the reaction can be turned into a forward reaction so that is the reason such kind of reaction which are basically exothermic reactions they are maintained or they are been uh, provided low temperature so as to get a, a maximum amount of product so that is the condition that uh, we have got to know over here with respect to uh, that is uh, the endothermic reaction as well as the exothermic reactions so that is what the effect of temperature is and that is how basically for a particular reaction by increasing the temperature we could uh, make that reaction a forward reaction or by decreasing the, uh, the temperature we could make the reaction to be a uh, that is a forward reaction so it depends on the reaction and it depends on the exothermic or the endothermic reaction or the property of those reactions so that's it this is what i want to talk about so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope you will share this video with the friends and don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much